This is Dennis McMahon, and welcome to Positively Vermont. Uh, today we have with us Barry Londere, uh, the chair of the board of directors of the Vermont Disaster Animal Response Team, otherwise known as VDOT. Correct. Welcome, Barry. Thank you. Glad to be here. And we're going to be speaking about helping animals in crisis. Uh, that's what your website has. Right. We're, we're going to make some references to that uh, about what the work you do and, and how other people can help. Well, but first, Barry, tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, so I am the chair of VDART. Uh, I live here in Burlington, and I, uh, we are a state organization. Um, and uh, during my kind of day job, I work for the Humane Society of the United States as their state director here in Vermont and work on all kinds of animal policy issues. So came to VDART through my work, uh, uh, kind of my day job. and. Um, you know, was really interested in how we could make sure that when disasters happen, when animals are um, at threat and in danger, and along with their uh, human owners and caretakers, um, you know, there's a place for people to bring and care for animals that are uh, that's safe and that um, you know can provide the care that they need and get them through a, a challenging situation. So. Uh, learned about VDART and, and uh, got involved and was elected uh, chair uh, a couple years ago and serving the second two-year term right now uh, as chair. That's great. Well, I understand this was started in 2007. Tell, tell us about how this all came about. Sure. Uh, you know, I think there is an uh, appreciation in 2005 with Hurricane Katrina just how important uh, planning and preparing for animal needs are. There were studies that were done after Katrina hit that you know, a significant um, portion, I think around 40% uh, percent or so of individuals who chose to stay did so in part or in, you know, in full to um, because they didn't know where they were going to take their pets. Um, and there was an appreciation in, after Katrina, really, that if you're not planning for pets in a disaster uh, situation when people you know, must leave their homes on short notice, that the humans <laughs> were more likely to make bad decisions like staying in places where they were in danger and, and could very well uh, die. And I'm sure there are people in Katrina that, uh, quite frankly, died because they didn't leave uh, because they didn't know where they would take their pets and they weren't willing to just leave their pets in a, in a dangerous situation while they uh, sought uh, refuge. So out of Katrina we had changes in federal law. The Pets Act uh, was passed in 2006 that uh, did really two things. One required state and local officials to incorporate planning for pets into their disaster uh, preparations and then also allowed for FEMA to reimburse uh, after the fact for those expenses that go into sheltering and feeding and housing animals. So it essentially really incentivized groups like VDART to, uh, to, to start up and around the country you saw state and local organizations like that uh, are created and that's you know, kind of why, why it was created here in Vermont is we responded to the need, responded to changes in federal law, and created VDART to really be that uh, point organization for, for disaster response for, for, for pets and companion animals. Prior to this, who would handle it? Uh, the fire department? Well, no, no one really. I mean, it, it was, you know, I think prior to 2000, prior to, you had Hurricane Andrew and other storms that, that sort of more forward-thinking areas um, and, and practically areas that were more impacted uh, by uh, frequent storms and, and, and uh, disaster type situations um, began to realize that uh, it wasn't a luxury and I think before you, you kind of had the idea well it, planning for pets putting money into thinking about what you, what you do uh, with pets that's a luxury we should really be thinking about humans and, you know, most of the shelters that were set up for humans in the 90s and early 2000s just wouldn't take in pets. So you really, that's why you were really faced with the choice of do you seek refuge and leave your pets behind or do you stay where you are? Um, and it led people to make bad decisions. So I think it was a really a, a sea change in sort of how the emergency response um, more broadly thought about 
pets and how they could actually be um, a way of getting people to make the right decisions by by ensuring that they had a place for them to go. So before before this, not there wasn't a whole lot. You really were faced with a bad choice if you had to leave um, in many places of, of stay or leave your pets behind. What about service animals? Um, well, that's a tough, I mean, it, it, I think it would probably depend on the state and local laws in the area, but I think that was a huge issue too. I mean, you, you, um, you know, I think there would be more desire, you know, more efforts to accommodate that, but there was certainly no guarantee that even, you know, service animals would be allowed into a shelter either. So certainly now we want to make sure that whether it's a service animal, whether it's just a companion pet that you, you know, treat like a family member, uh, that, that we plan for them accordingly and that they're not treated separately um, because they are a part of why people make the decisions that they do um, to leave or stay. That's great. Well, give us an idea of how uh, VGAR is structured, how it operates, uh, what its facilities are throughout the state. Sure. So we VDAR is kind of the state umbrella organization for several regional teams. So we, we, we fully believe that the best and most effective response uh, begins at the local level. So we have uh, several regional teams within uh, VDART, uh, Chittenden County, Central Vermont, Upper Valley, Wyndham, uh, the um, uh, Orleans, Essex um, area. Uh, all those are chartered regional teams. So we really focus on providing the services, the response, of course, in, in, in a situation, the outreach to local officials that we do to help make sure that they're planning for pets and, and their emergency plans, the education and outreach that we do at the local level so that individual pet owners are prepared. Um, all that's really carried out through our regional teams. That's where a, a lot of the um, kind of direct uh, service and, and work gets done. VDART is, is the organization that uh, encompasses all those teams and takes care of the, uh, a lot of the more logistical and, and uh, operational um, uh, things that we need to do to kind of keep the lights on and, and allow us to be uh, functioning and allow those regional teams to do uh, their work. So we uh, really believe in, in uh, having local regional teams that work in the community and get to know the, the local shelters, the people, the vets, and others that are in the area that are going to be needed in, in any type of response. What type of uh, foresight, uh, if possible, do you have about uh, disasters coming in? We had a very rough winter uh, this winter. Uh, uh, how did you plan yeah. for that? Um, you know, I think we're fortunate in a way because uh, it being in Vermont, that is, in term, you know, I think a lot of the disaster situations we deal with, we do have some degree of foresight, whether it's a winter storm, you can kind of see that coming, mm -hmm. even a hurricane or tropical storm like Irene in 2011, which we, we helped, um, you know, provide response and assistance to that for pet owners. You could see it coming in advance versus other areas where you're dealing with tornadoes or wildfires or things that are much more instantaneous and you may not have uh, that type of preparation. So to some extent, we're a little bit fortunate to have our disasters are more likely to be things that we can foresee a little in advance. But it certainly is a challenge in our organization, um, just as it is, I'm sure, in the Red Cross and other response groups of knowing that you are uh, working towards and training and planning towards these events that you hope don't happen and if they do you hope are, are fairly rare but that when they do happen you really need someone there to be able to provide the services um, at that time and that's kind of what we we do we sort of train and prepare to be on standby uh, knowing that um, you know when we're needed it's, it's probably going to be a pretty important uh, moment that's great what type of experience or an expertise uh, do people have to have to uh, become a volunteer? Yeah, I mean, I think it's helpful to be familiar with animals and have probably cared for them and have them, uh, you know, in your home or, 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 or certainly be comfortable around animals. That's kind of a, a baseline. But other than that, we you know we we will help provide the training that you need. I mean, I, we we take every you know, a lot of the the volunteers for our group certainly come from the shelter world. They, they are staff at shelters or they volunteer at local animal shelters. So they, uh, we certainly re recruit heavily from people who are already involved in 
animal care and adoption and, and uh, well-being of, of, of pets and other companion animals. Um, vets are, are important. Uh, cer certainly if you're having a shelter uh, and your a lots of animals are coming in at, at one time and you're trying to triage and figure out, you know, are there any that with illnesses, are there any with injuries that need to be treated, uh, having uh, some vets that are involved, and, and we have a few, but we could certainly uh, use more. But really there is no... Um, we really just need people who are passionate about this organization. We certainly, you know, we have, uh, you could be someone who just likes to, to fundraise, quite frankly. Yeah. We could certainly use things like that. So we, we'll take any skill set you might have that, that any nonprofit group would, would find helpful, marketing experience, kind of allowing us to share our message more effectively. So we'll, we can utilize any, any, um, any type of expertise uh, in our organization, but we will uh, we we will teach you what you need to know about setting up and running an animal shelter, handling and caring for animals. That's part of our you know our required training uh, as a volunteer. Um, but um, certainly, any other experience or, or skills you bring, we will find a, a way to put them to use. <laughs> That's great. What type of training opportunities do you afford to volunteers? Yeah, so about three or three to four times a year, we'll, we'll, we have kind of our main basic training course, which is called uh, um, um, Emergency Animal Sheltering um, um, class. And that's mm -hmm. a day-long course where we really walk through how we set up and run a shelter, what the protocols are, um, basics of handling cats, dogs, other small animals that might be coming in, uh, you know, rabbits and other uh, um, animals that are likely to, to be brought some, from somebody's home. Uh, we'll walk through um, how to set up and break down a shelter, uh, walk through the intake process of people bringing in animals, how to make sure that we, uh, you know, get them <laughs> uh, identified and have, you know, are able to, to take it into our care in the most consistent, effective way we can. Uh, we'll go through all of that. That's kind of our basic day day long course that we that we provide for to most uh, to provide to new volunteers. And like I said, we offer three or four times uh, a year. And then we also have other opportunities that regional teams have done. So pet first aid classes. A lot of the regional teams, when they meet uh, in their periodic um, uh, meetings. We'll bring in a local vet or someone from a local shelter do a pet pet first aid class. They'll uh, some teams have also held equine and large animal uh, handling classes to get folks. Even though that's not really our necessarily our focus, but we also want to have volunteers that, if the need arises, they can go and and assist in those type of cases and help and be comfortable around animals that they may not. You know, not everyone has, is as familiar with a cow or a horse as they are with a dog or a cat. So we want to at least have our volunteers be uh, familiar with that. So pet first aid, uh, large animal classes, um, those are other opportunities that are available that either we will help organize or, you know, another good uh, reason to kind of be involved and on our email list and get our newsletters and our website is we'll try to advertise other training opportunities in the state or in the region um, that are available that we, we're not running, but we can, we can make sure that people are aware of and they can go to and attend on their own and, and develop their own skills. Hmm. Well, one of the things we discussed uh, in preparation for this was this activation protocol that mm -hmm. you have. How does someone uh, request assistance sure. and what happens next? Yeah, I think you know, I think it's important because it can be a little confusing, and 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 we certainly have had cases where people have contacted us directly, thinking we are we can you know respond directly to some particular you know, certain uh, situation that a person is having, and there's just some confusion about what we do. So we really are in a we we work uh, primarily through the state and through state authorization. So the main and really the primary way that we're activated is through the state veterinarian who works with the Vermont Emergency Management Agency. So when they, a, a town or a local service organization like the Red Cross or the state uh, decides that there is a, an emergency situation, they make a declaration, there's a request for our assistance from one of those um, groups, they'll contact us, we'll 
uh, we'll um, reach out to the regional team that covers that area of the state or we have a few areas of the state that, that do not have a regional team yet, which is one of the things we want to work and build and have a regional team everywhere. Uh, we'll find whatever regional team is closest to that particular town or area uh, and ask them to deploy and go wherever you know, we're told. Usually it's a auditorium or a, or a gymnasium at a, at a high school or middle school or something. And uh, we'll go set up. We'll usually working alongside the Red Cross and other emergency management um, state personnel to to run those shelters. And we'll go in and we'll set up essentially an animal shelter um, companion. You know, right in the if it, if if it's ideal, it'll be you know the room next door to wherever they have the main uh, shelter set up for the humans that are coming in. Uh, and we'll, you know, set up and run a shelter um, uh, when requested by those agencies. If somebody has a particular emergency uh, for their own companion animals, we, we advise them to contact, uh, you know, their local animal control or law enforcement. Same thing if it's wildlife, there's the, uh, you can go to the Fish and Wildlife uh, Warden or, or Wildlife Rehabilitator, which is, you can find on the Fish and Wildlife website. And again, if it's a large, um, large animal equine, uh, there's the Large Animal um, Technical Response Coalition in Vermont uh, that can help provide, say, a, an animal has got fallen into a ditch or something like that and needs to be rescued out. There are people who can really focus on that. So we're, we can be a clearinghouse for people who come in and have questions. We can get them to the right agency. But in terms of when we deploy, it's really at the request of the state and at the request of uh, service organizations who are uh, responding to a human natural disaster that we need to be able to go in and, and provide some uh, option for the pets that might be being brought into the shelter. That's great. Well, how, how should uh, uh, someone prepare in advance for an emergency situation? Yeah, that's, a, yeah, that's an important thing because a lot of times, you, you know, a lot of what we do is in addition to the direct services and the training is, is trying to go out into the community, uh, educate the public on the ways that they can prepare. We go to a lot of um, festivals and uh, farmers markets and things like that in the local community, do tabling events to try to get the word out that the best thing you can do as a, as a pet owner is to be prepared to have supplies for your own pet. So we recommend for each pet uh, or collectively if you have several kind of putting together in a backpack or some kind of bag you know food water medicine are the, are the kind of the three main things for for you know at least a week or so supply of each um, then you might want you should also have um, uh, vaccine records any veterinary records that might be necessary in a situation where you're you know taking it in and, and leaving it somewhere for someone else to care for uh, and um, identification. So a good idea is to take a picture with your pet and maybe on, and on the back of it kind of write uh, the breed, the description, color, sex, and is the basic information you might need. That's good for both you have that information and it's also a way of identifying the pet afterwards. Um, you know, kind of proof of ownership with you uh, there with the pet. Uh, and uh, so all those are things to good to have ready because in many cases, it might not be, you might not need to come to a shelter, but you might seek refuge, say, in, a, in a, another family member or a friend's home elsewhere. They may not have the things that you need for your pet, and there may not be an ability to get the things you need. So really preparing ahead of time for what would I do if I was cut off from, um, from resources and, and uh, services for a week or so, how would I just make sure my pet had the basics of what they needed to, to, to make it through that? That's what we recommend. We have, um, you know, a lot of these are, this is kind of our main brochure flyer that we hand out that has a lot of information about what we do and then also contains a section on uh, preparedness for yourself and for your own pets. And we have a section on our website, uh, vermontdart.org, that has uh, a whole section on things that you might want to think about putting in a go kit for your pet. That's interesting. A, a go kit. That's uh, I haven't heard that. That's uh, and what about things like fires? Uh, uh, how, how do you 
cope with that. Uh, you know, yeah. That's that's an immediate thing. Yeah, right? and and that's that's one of the things that we are looking at getting. So we 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 currently we we will help in those situations on a kind of one-off basis right now. We're not necessarily set up because we're really made we're, we're organized really to run through the emergency uh, response system, which mm -hmm. is more about state declared re emergency situations, which you, you point out a very, I mean, that's something we wanna work with the towns, uh, directly with towns to develop MOUs uh, and uh, to be able to come in and provide that type of assistance on smaller scale situations that are, that are not a disaster situation, but are certainly a disaster for the people that are involved you know, intimately in that fire and need a place to go. Um, we also can partner with, you know, we'll, we'll, we can provide support to uh, local shelters and others that might take in those animals on a short-term basis if somebody's needed. So we're definitely um, interested in getting more involved in, in kind of those smaller scale but um, acute events for the people that are involved. Um, and uh, we have teams working now to, to develop those agreements with all, you know, we have to work through the various towns around the state to, to make sure that we kind of have the agreements and the, and the policies all in place that we need to be able to respond in those situations that, like we do uh, when they're state emergencies. But uh, we're, we're, we want to get more involved in that. That's kind of one of the things on our horizon to, to see how we can be more involved in those uh, local response. That's great. I guess it's a question of a growing awareness of what you sure. do. Sure. And I think that's also part of reaching out to the local emergency management uh, officials in each in town to make sure that they are uh, in their emergency plans. They have all the right information that they need so they know to turn to who's their local shelter, who they contact, who is their, um, what regional team covers their area and who's the appropriate contact there. We want to make sure that the local officials who are who do have a responsibility both to prepare for the for the larger disaster, natural disaster type situations, but also uh, provide care in those uh, smaller scale situations that they know who we are, that they know the resources that are available, and we hope that can build uh, relationships with towns to where we can come in and, and play uh, play more of a role in, in any type of situation that might come up. That's great. What we like to ask on uh, Positively Vermont uh, is, as we're uh, kind of wrapping up, what do you need uh, from the community, uh, maybe from government, uh, and especially people who are watching this show right now? Sure. I mean, I think the two things that we always need are, um, and it probably is similar to a lot of nonprofit groups, are, are volunteers and, and financial donations. Um, they. You know, like I said before, we will take um, anyone who's interested in volunteering, certainly vets or people who have some type of expertise, particular expertise, large animal, farm animals, equines, um, that you can bring a, a particular skill set to our organization. We, we would certainly be eager to have folks like that join us. But even if you're just someone who wants, thinks this is a good cause, wants to, um, uh, to help and find a way to assist, we'll, we'll, we'll take you know um, anyone who uh, has a skill to bring to us. That could be fundraising, it could be marketing, it could be um, you know um, website design, technical skills that we that we might uh, uh, not have or could improve on. So we, we certainly welcome anyone who has an interest to, to be a volunteer. You can go to our website, uh, Vermont uh, VermontDart.org. There's a whole page on volunteer, um, becoming a volunteer. We actually just added um, earlier um, earlier this year uh, a way for people to register right there online in, in a fillable format that they can fill in their information. We'll just ask, you know, basic contact information, but we also ask questions about, um, you know, do you have experience caring or handling for certain types of animals? Do you have equipment or, or things that might be useful, tractors, trailers, things like that, that that uh, could be used in a response, so a few questions. But you get, you know, you put that in uh, and you'll be added to our email list, you'll be added to um, receive the information that we put out about training opportunities and events that are going on. And, more, and most importantly, you'll be um, 
put in contact with your local regional team that wherever it is in your town and that's really going to be the point person for those volunteers to get involved and then and obviously the other question is donations i mean we are we are we pride ourselves on being you know a very lean organization and uh you know we we really uh, fundraise mainly to you know keep the lights on and to make sure that we have uh, supplies in our trailers. So we have, um, I mentioned this early, but we, uh, we have uh, soon to have four uh, trailers that we have stationed uh, around in various parts of the state. And they're able to respond. They essentially have everything you would need to set up uh, an animal shelter, create supplies like that. So uh, we use, you know, whatever donations that we receive to make sure that we have the supplies we need, to make sure that we um, are able to do the trainings each year to keep our, our volunteers sharp on the skills that they need, and then to just kind of uh, maintain the um, the, the financial um, necessities of an organization, insurance, and other things like that. So we, we certainly could use uh, financial support. Um, and, and like I said, we, 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 are, um, we have a lot of really great volunteers that put in a lot of time and effort to, to, uh, uh, to uh, take care of the things that we need to be prepared. And uh, uh, with what we, what we have, we, we try to go a long way with what, what we raise and to make uh, the best use out of it as we can to really be there when uh, the unfortunate, rare situation happens, but you need people who are trained and prepared and the resources ready to go. Uh, we're that organization. That's great. Uh, is there any uh, particular events coming up uh, between now and the end of the year? Well, we're, we're looking now to schedule um, some trainings for the fall. We don't have dates for them yet, but we, I know that the Chittenden County, which I'm uh, involved in, uh, re local team is looking to schedule a emergency animal sheltering training sometime this September, October. They'll be on our calendar. Uh, we have lots of uh, regional events um, uh, that I don't off the top of my head, I'm not sure the, the, what the regional teams are, are doing, but they go to a lot of uh, festivals and events. So you should look for them in, in, uh, in your local town uh, farmer's market or, or other uh, kind of seasonal events that are taking place. We try to get the word out and do tablings. I know there's a Petapalooza event that Pet Food Warehouse hosts mm -hmm. in the fall that, that, that uh, the Chittenden County team that I'm um, uh, that's the regional team that I'm, I work uh, and, and directly with. You know, we go to that and, and do a, a public awareness and, again, hand out brochures and things to uh, get people to do what they can to prepare ahead of time and to know that we exist and that the services are out there. So uh, we have a calendar on our, on our website that has events, but also we put them out in our newsletter that, that we send out. So if you're interested in, in uh, even just learning about what we do and, and getting more information, you can go fill out the volunteer form and be added to that email list. That's great. Well, thank you very much, Barry. Oh, I'm glad to be here. And my guest has been Barry Landere, the chair of the Vermont uh, Disaster Animal Response Team, otherwise known as VDARC. Uh, this is Dennis McMahon for Positively Vermont. Thank you for watching.